Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this picture. By removing any visible means of support, your subject will appear to float in space. In this image, this was achieved in camera, as opposed to painting out a support in post-production. The technique can be used for a variety of subjects. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so to start with the subject then. This is a clove of garlic, and this will be the subject for this shoot. Now the whole point of this is to make this appear as if it's just floating in space with no visible means of support. So in order to achieve that, what I'm going to do is use this uh, small piece of welding rod and I'm going to uh, just pierce the garlic at the back here and just put the welding rod in like that. And by doing that, if this is now pointing at the camera, the subject itself will hide the support, the welding rod. OK, so to get all this to work, what I'm going to do is just use a piece of cloth like this and first of all, I'm just going to place the, the welding rod through the cloth like that. Why I'm doing that will become apparent a little later. So now just put the garlic on the end of the rod, like so. And now to support all this, I'm just going to use a retort stand. So here we are. Place this on here, just pop this end in the clamp here and just tighten that up. There we are. So now I can now use this piece of cloth just to hide most of the retort stand. And I'll just put a clip on that just to leave that like so. There we are. So once I've got it to this stage, the next thing to do, I'm just going to put another piece of cloth on the table here just to make sure I don't get any uh, spurious reflections off anything. There we are, just like that. So next thing to do would be just to have a look at the subject from the camera's point of view. So from the camera's point of view, as it comes round, there is a point where the support is completely hidden by the subject. And that is what we want. So with all that bit set, the next thing to do is think about how it's going to be lit. I'm going to use this very small flash head uh, and I'm going to place it about here somewhere, fairly close in. There we are, that should do. So this has been placed at this very close distance so that due to the inverse square law, um, we don't get a great deal of exposure on the background down here. OK, the other thing to bear in mind is that the exit uh, diameter of this is about 100 millimetres. And this is about 100 millimetres away from the subject. So with this bit of scale, this will appear as a huge softbox. So it should be quite a soft light we get. OK, so having set all that up, the next thing will be to set up the camera. So this is the camera that I'll be using uh, for this shoot. And this is a 5 by 4 inch technical camera. But you can actually change the uh, back on this. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'll set up the shot using this camera and then change out the focusing screen at the back here for a digital camera. OK, so on the front of the camera, I have a Schneider 150mm uh, 5.6 lens. And the thing to remember here is that that is a 150mm lens. It doesn't matter what size the sensor is on the back. It will still be a 150mm lens. So it will still act like one. I'll come back to that a bit later. OK, so let's just point this at the subject. I'll just wind this round. There. Now at this point, uh, I'm just going to turn on the modelling light on this uh, flash so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. 
OK, so now as I turn the camera, you should be able to see the image move around on the ground glass screen on the back. So I can just line that up and just get it in the centre. Like so. So the amount of the image which is covered by the sensor will vary with the size of the sensor. So for instance, if I used a full frame format, then this is the amount of image which would be captured by that particular sensor. Now in this case, I'm going to use a true medium format sensor, and that will allow this amount of the image to be captured. OK, so with all that now set, I can dispense with the modelling light and I'll just take the back off this camera. So I'll remove the bellows and just remove the back. There we are. So I'm just going to replace that with this medium format uh, sensor which is part of this aerial imaging camera which has been loaned to me by an aerial imaging company. OK, so this is 80 megapixel. So it will give quite a large detailed file. I'll just place that in there like so. And then just reattach the bellows with nothing more complex than a couple of pieces of sticky tape. Like so. So now with that changed, what I can do is I'll plug this camera in and we'll use the software here, which is Capture One software, uh, just to control the camera. There we are, so with it all plugged in, the camera has been recognised by the software and these are some of the settings which are on the camera at the moment. So it has a shutter speed of 1 one-hundredth of a second, ISO of 100, and it's showing an aperture of f16. But there is no connection between the lens on this camera and uh, the camera itself. So that is just a default. The camera lens is actually set to 5.6, which is its maximum aperture. OK, so with those settings uh, and no flash turned on at the moment, what I'll do is grab an image and just make sure I don't get any contamination from the house lights. There we are. We can see that we're just getting uh, the smallest amount of image there. But that, of course, is at maximum aperture. And I won't be using this at maximum aperture. I'll be using it at something like f16. So let's just put f16 on the lens. There we are. So now with the lens set, let's just grab that again, and it should be completely black. Which it is. OK. So now any light which I add from here will be the only light which affects the subject. So let's just uh, turn on the flash sync trigger to fire the flash. Like so. We'll just grab an image and see what we get this time. There we are. So that's starting to get there. It's possibly a, a little bright. And also, the bottom of the garlic bulb here could do with a little bit of filling in. OK, so we'll just take one stop of energy out of the flash. And to fill in the bottom of the subject, what I'm going to use is a card flag. So here I have uh, a white card flag. I'm just going to place that in a, another retort stand. Just like that. There we are. So with that in place, that should uh, just bounce a little bit of this light back into the subject again. Let's just grab that and see what we get this time. Yes, that's much better. If I compare it to the previous image, this was all a little bright, and now that's all got turned down, and all this has become filled in. 
OK, so for capturing the image, uh, that's it. The image is now captured. So what I'm going to do now is go into Photoshop and just do the bare minimum of post-production. So here we are in Photoshop, and I've loaded up the file of the image that I captured earlier. And obviously the beauty of the technique I employed is that I don't need to paint anything out because the means of support for this particular subject is directly behind it. Therefore, from this view, you can't actually see it. And I think that's quite a nice little picture as it is. There are one or two things that I want to do, and I'm going to start by just making a copy of this file so that I can leave the camera original alone. So to do that, I'm just going to go onto the background layer here and right-click the mouse, ask for a duplicate layer, and ask for a new document. We'll just call this garlic. There we are. So now Photoshop has made me a new document at the top here so I can dispense with the camera original. That way I've always got some redundancy. So the next thing that I'm going to do, I think, would be just to uh, have a good look around the image. So I'm just going to zoom in to 100%. And now you can see just the amount of detail that it's possible to capture with that 80 megapixel sensor. Very good. OK, I think the next thing to do would be to just uh, look at a suitable crop. So I'm going to be using this for video, so I'm going to use a specific ratio of 16 by 9. And there's very little that I need to do to it, really. Uh, just maybe move it down slightly in the frame. Uh, but I think that's pretty good, just as it is. So we'll just click on OK. And there we have it. So by using a really very simple technique, I've been able to make this object just float in space. And for this type of subject, that can look extremely good. So I think overall that's turned out rather well. OK, well I hope you liked watching how I made that image, and if you like watching these sorts of things, do click on the other images as they appear, and don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.